What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be doing a full in-depth review on the Fnatic Jet Speed Gaming mouse pad. I have some questions about this pad. Is it going to be too fast? Is there going to be any control with this pad? And more importantly, is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse pad for you? Let's check it out. Alright guys, and here we got the Fnatic Jet Speed Gaming mouse pad. And just to get started off the bat here, as you guys can see, I actually opted for the XL version. The XL version is coming in at 465 millimeters by 465 millimeters. And the thickness is coming in at three millimeters and it has a very low profile compared to the other offerings on the market. When it comes to the overall build, starting out with the base, this just has a standard rubberized base. But when you do have this laid flat on your desk, I didn't notice any issues with it moving around on me at all whatsoever in my gameplay. And then when it comes to the stitching and the mouse pad, the stitching is done really nicely. It is slightly raised up over the actual surface of the pad, but it's very minimal and you hardly notice it. I don't notice any issues with the stitching on my copy and with that being said, it's a very flat and a very soft type of edge. While I was gaming and using this pad, I didn't notice the edges at all. The stitching never bothered me. It never rubbed up against my forearm and made me feel uncomfortable any type of way or anything like that. So I'd say overall, they've done a great job with the stitching here. It feels great and it hasn't hindered my performance in any way at all. And then finally, when it comes to the surface of this pad, I believe it just has a laminated surface on it. To me, this feels very flat on your desk and when you push into it, it just kind of feels like you're just pushing into the rubber base. Fnatic actually classifies it as a medium type sponge. Again, it just feels rubbery. There is very minimal play or give to the pad but you can slightly push into it a little bit. I was kind of running my fingers up and down the pad and you kind of get this kind of weird feeling wavy pattern when you're moving it up and down. But I can tell you guys I've pushed this thing to the max. I've pushed in this pad quite a bit. I've been pretty rough with it. I've tested it out. It's not an issue where I noticed any type of feedback or noticing that waviness through my mouse. It has an equally fast glide on the Y and on the X axis. And one thing to note about the pad is as you can see here as I'm rubbing my fingers all over it, it does tend to get a bit greasy and it does look dirty overall. So it does require a wipe down from time to time if you don't want it to look so dirty. And aside from that, when it comes to keeping this clean, you know, honestly, there's been a couple times where I've had to wipe it down here and there. It isn't as apparent to me as using glass mouse pads where if you get something on it, it just gets terrible. That can happen with this pad, but it doesn't seem to happen as often. And then another cool thing about the surface is it is water resistant. So if you do spill any type of water on top of the surface, all you gotta do is just wipe it off with a towel or a cloth. And then when it comes to cleaning the surface, they do include Include this microfiber cloth in the box. I thought that was a cool feature. The first recommendation for cleaning this is just to wipe down with the microfiber cloth that is included in the box. If you were to spill something on the pad or if it were to get a little sticky, the next recommendation would be to just wipe it off with a damp washcloth. And then if you do get this severely dirty and a damp cloth is just not fixing the issue for you, what Fnatic does recommend is to do a mixture of 50% alcohol and 50% water. And then I would probably just lightly put that on a cloth and then just wipe it down. I wouldn't recommend using any harsh cleaners or anything like that to preserve the life and the durability. They do have their logo down here in the bottom right corner. This does just kind of feel like an overlaid graphic on here and it doesn't seem to hinder the performance and never got in my way or anything like that. I didn't even notice it was there to be honest with you. Okay, so when it comes to my experience with using the pad, it has been kind of humid where I've been and honestly the surface of this feels incredibly soft. I haven't noticed humidity having 
as much of an impact or too much of an impact on the surfaces. It's honestly been performing great for me. It hasn't been really getting sticky like glass pads or other hard pads or anything like that. And let me tell you guys, when it comes to the overall performance, yes, this pad does have a fast glide. And yes, it does have low initial static friction. When you're moving your mouse across this pad from a dead stop, honestly, it takes off really easy. There's not a whole lot of tug to it. There's never a point where it really felt muddy to me or anything like that. And then the overall glide is really fast. I would definitely categorize it as one of the faster gliding mouse pads out there. If you've guys seen my recent videos, I've just tested out all the glass mouse pads. I've been kind of comparing them to the Artisan Shinden Kai. So truthfully, this pad has dropped at the perfect time for me. If you are someone that's coming from a speed pad or like a speed style cloth pad or you know, something like the Artisan Hien, a cloth pad with a rougher surface on it. This definitely has a faster and overall smooth glide. If you're to push into the pad, again, there's not a whole lot of sponginess, but you don't have any issues with your mouse feeling floaty or like it's kind of like just wobbling around when you're trying to get it to a dead stop. When I was tracking and holding my shots, as you can see here, this thing actually stops on a dime. So the biggest thing that has taken me by surprise is honestly how well that I have been performing with it. So when it comes to using different types of mice and different types of skates on this pad, I do feel like there is a difference across the board. And though it doesn't have a significant impact on the performance, honestly, all these mice, they glide really quickly on here. I do feel like the bigger that the mouse skates are, it just has a tiny bit of a slower glide. And the thing that is very different about this surface is typically bigger skates, they give you a slower glide, but they also give you more control. And I don't feel like it necessarily works that way on this pad. Through my testing, I found that bigger skates, not only do they perform a little bit slower on the pad as far as the glide goes, but it's honestly kind of hard to get a little bit more of that stopping power and that control with the bigger skates. Now don't get me wrong, you can use these big skates and you can honestly stop pretty decently compared to like glass pads or something like that. However, I do feel like when you're trying to stop, it kind of gives you a little bit of a floaty feeling there at the very end. It's not major or not as bad as on glass pads, but it still is slightly there. When it comes to getting the absolute best performance out of this pad, in my opinion, I was testing out both the HTX and the Lamzu Atlantis Mini. Now, I do feel like the glide on the HTX is just slightly a bit slower than on the Lamzu Atlantis Mini because it has these smaller dot skates on here, but you still get really good control and since this mouse is so light, it truly performs flawlessly on here. It feels great, it feels perfect. But if I were to go ahead and give my honest opinion on a number one, I feel like the smaller skates you have on this pad, the better that it feels overall. And let me explain. So with the smaller skates, I do feel like you get a little bit of a quicker glide, even though it's not by a major difference, I do notice it is there. But I'd say where the biggest difference lies with these smaller skates is I feel like these smaller skates, for whatever reason, I don't know if they dig into the pad more or whatever it is, put smaller pressure points in it, but I was overall getting more control and stopping power with these smaller skates. And I can't stress to you guys enough, when I got this pad out of the box, I was just like, ah, eh, whatever, it feels okay. It didn't feel like super premium or like blow my mind or anything like that. But then I started gaming with this pad and this is not the Atlantis Mini 4K, but I was using my Atlantis Mini 4K. And I can truly tell you guys right now, I was just, I don't know what it was, I was just killing it. I thought I was having just a good day at first. I tried it again the next day. And it just no matter what I did, I just seemed to perform so good on this pad. You know, not that it's a big deal or anything, but I truly did hit my biggest score and I broke my record on aim labs with the Atlantis mini 4k and with this pad and overall like I said it just gave you so much confidence in it being used to speed pads and knowing how to use speed pads again if you're coming from a slower pad you know you're gonna have to get used to this pad it does have a, a definitely a very fast glide and a different feel and you do have to be a little bit aggressive with this pad I feel like to get the most out of it not too aggressive but again it just it seems to just work with how it stops for me and then when it comes to the overall experience if you are a glass skate user you do have a quicker glide you still however can get a little bit of stopping power with the glass so it doesn't necessarily as badly feel like you're on a skating rink but you do kind of get aggressive you got to kind of plant your palm down and kind of push into the pad to do that but I would definitely definitely say that the glass skates, they honestly, they perform really great on this pad so far. And then last up when it comes to the sapphire skates, the sapphire skates are kind of the same thing. I do feel like the glass skates 
perform quicker on here and you do get an incredible glide with the sapphire skates however it is just a little bit slower and a little bit more controlled and one thing i did notice about the glass skates and the sapphire skates when you're comparing it to just the ptfe feet i feel like when you're kind of going back and forth whether you're jiggle aiming or whether you're just doing some really quick micro adjustments or some really quick tracking it does feel a little bit muddier when you're getting from stopping going stopping going really quickly and where the ptfe kind of feels just a little bit smoother in that sense but either way really cool thing that you can use all different types of skates on this pad and i thought that they all performed greatly but if i did have to pick my personal first choice Again, it's going to go with the PTFE, the smaller skates. All right, so when comparing the Fnatic Jet to some of the other speed offerings out there on the market, I do feel like the overall glide on the Fnatic Jet, when comparing it to the TJ exclusive Serapad, this is the original Serapad, I do feel like the original Serapad does have a little bit more of a controlled glide and a little bit of a slower glide over the Jet. And let's drop a speed test between the two. All right, and then next up, when it comes to comparing the Fnatic Jet to the Razer Atlas glass pad, overall, I do feel like the Jet does have a faster glide, and I do feel like the Razer Atlas is a little bit more controlled when it comes to the glide of the pad. However, when it comes to the stopping power, again, with glass mouse pads, it's really hard to get that true stopping power. And I find myself with these pads, even with the Razer Atlas being as controlled as it is, when you're getting down into the micro adjustments or the micro tracking, it does kind of have, like I've said many times before in my other reviews, it kind of has like this almost like jelloing effect, like this little slippery feeling. Whereas I feel like with the Jet, you can just stop on the dime with it. So that was one really cool feature about the jet when comparing it to the Razer Atlas let's drop a glide test all right and then next up one more glass mouse pad and the reason that I'm throwing the Pulsar Super Glide on here is because I feel like overall the Pulsar Super Glide does have a faster glide than the Razer Atlas again same characteristics that I mentioned before where I do feel like you get more stopping power with the Fnatic Jet as opposed to these glass pads and you do get Great stopping power for glass pads on the Super Glide and the Razor Atlas. Again, it's just easier on the Fnatic Jet for me to push in and just get the mouse to stop a little bit easier. So with that being said, same characteristics, but let's go ahead and let's drop a speed test between these two for you guys. So honestly, I would say the speed between these two are pretty similar. However, I do feel like the Fnatic is just slightly a bit faster. All right, and then last but not least, one of the biggest comparisons that I can think of when comparing this pad is gonna be up against the Artisan Shindenkai. You know, it is really hard to say for me when it comes to the characteristics of these two pads, which one is actually faster. Truly the Fnatic Jet, the glide feels a little bit smoother than on the Artisan Shindenkai. I feel like the Artisan Shindenkai overall just kind of has a little bit of a rougher glide since it's got those glass beads on there. Both of these pads, I would say, in my opinion, they're almost equally as fast as one another and it's really hard to tell who the victor is. So let's go ahead and drop a speed test really quick and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Overall, the characteristics of the speed between these two pads is very similar. So I guess I might be able to see some slight instances where you can say that the Fnatic Dash could be a little quicker than the Shindenkai. However, the one thing that I personally feel like stands these two pads apart from one another. One of the problems that I've always had with the Artisan Shindenkai, you kind of get that same kind of slippery feeling when you're trying to use the stopping power of the Shindenkai. And when you're getting down, you're trying to do those really quick micro adjustments or trying to stop on a dime. You can do it if you really push into this pad, but I do feel like for whatever reason, that the Fnatic Jet has just a little bit better control and stopping power. And I'm talking about mostly when you're doing those micro adjustments, when you're doing those quick flicks, when you're doing that really quick tracking up close. Overall, the Shinin Kai pad just kind of feels a little bit looser and a little bit more slippery, where this one just feels a little bit grippier. I would say the characteristics between these two pads are honestly, they're very similar, but I do kind of feel like I perform better personally on the Fnatic Jet. All right, guys, so that wraps things up here for the Fnatic Jet. This mouse pad coming in at $39.99 
It honestly has been a great performer for me and I've absolutely just loved using this pad. I do have to say the overall build construction is great. I truly have no complaints, but it does kind of leave a little bit more for me to be left desired. It doesn't feel as premium as the other offerings that are currently out there on the market. And we all know there's a ton of people out there making mouse pads in this space right now. I must say that this pad has brought me a different experience compared to other offerings that I've been currently using and testing out in the market. And again, it's just been a solid performer for me. So with that being said, the fact that you could pick this pad up from Amazon, I have to give this pad a recommendation. Due to the fact that just purely based on the performance that I feel like I've been confident with my shots, I've been confident with my gameplay, I've been hitting plays that honestly have been kind of impressing me from time to time on this pad. Truly, at the end of the day, that is really the most important factor when it comes to using gaming peripherals. And in terms of performance, I have just been personally just been killing it with this pad. All right, guys, so that wraps things up. If you have any questions or you feel like there's anything else that I left out, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you are interested in supporting this channel, I'm gonna be leaving links to where you can pick up this mouse pad down in the description. And if you've enjoyed watching this video and are looking forward to seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.